Hi, this is a lecture on triangles. We all know what triangles are. Triangles are a geometric shape which has three vertices, three sides and three angles. Before we get into triangles themselves, we will first discuss the idea of congruent figures. Congruent figures stand to represent uh, figures which are for all purposes intended identical to each other. For example, let's look at say two circles with exactly the same radius. So these two, uh, obviously these are not perfectly drawn, but two circles with the same radius can be called congruent figures. They can be, the congruency can be checked by simply taking one and overlapping uh, it over the other and if it perfectly overlaps then they are called congruent figures. So uh, a rather crude statement of what congruent figures would be are figures with same size and shape. For example, consider two squares. Say one of them has a side length of A and the other one has a side length of 2A. Now both of them are the same shape, that is the shape of a square. But both of them are not congruent because they do not have the same size. And you can check that by simply taking this and overlapping it, trying to overlap at least over the uh, one with two-way side, and you'll discover it does not overlap perfectly. So therefore, because they do not have the same size, even though they have the same shape, they are not congruent figures. But if you consider two squares of say side B, both of them, both of them being squares with side B, then these two are congruent figures because they have the same shape uh, by the virtue of them being squares and the same size because both of them have sides equal to b. So that's that's a uh, rather crude but but useful and practical uh, definition of what congruent figures are. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, lecture the terms congruent triangles will be more important than uh, congruency of figures in general. So again, we'll, we'll borrow the idea from what congruent figures are. Figures are uh, figures with the same size and shape are called uh, congruent figures and so therefore congruent triangles from that definition would be triangles with the same shape and same size. Now because they are triangles, the shape will uh, obviously be the same. Uh, that is of a triangle. So uh, the whole emphasis is on them having the same size. So the tightest of definition for congruent triangles would be to have two triangles with the same side uh, with all the sides equal to each other, corresponding sides equal to each other. That is, this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side, and this angle is equal to this angle, this angle is equal to this angle, and this angle is equal to this angle. So for all purposes intended, these two uh, triangles are actually identical to each other and can also therefore be called congruent triangles. Uh, our, our pursuit in this chapter partially would be to find conditions uh, in which triangles are congruent because uh, this is a very strict definition of congruent triangles. Uh, as we will go on further, we will see that you know uh, the equality of just three out of the six uh, parameters might just make it uh, constraint enough for them to be equal. So uh, as an example, say if all three sides were equal uh, corresponding to the other three sides of the triangle or the other triangle, 
they might just be congruent triangles and therefore automatically the angles will be equal and we wouldn't have to really check for them. So we will look at all the uh, conditions which are there for triangles to be congruent in this chapter apart from some other things. Now uh, CPCT stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles and corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal by the very definition of congruency. So therefore uh, the corresponding side to this side would be this side in this triangle and so because this triangle is congruent to this triangle this side will be equal to this side and that and the angle corresponding to this angle is this angle and this angle is equal to this angle and, and so on so corresponding parts of corresponding triangles are equal this is a very important property and uh, will be used uh, when doing questions etc now as I talked about earlier, these are the properties, these are the criteria uh, for congruence of triangles. First one is called SAS or side angle side. Second one is called ASA, angle side angle. Third one is called AAS which is angle angle side. The fourth one is called SSS side side side. And the fifth one and finally is called RHS which is right angle hypotenuse and side. We will look at each of the five uh, in detail uh, when we move forward. So the first uh, condition criteria for congruence is SAS congruence rule. It's it, it's stated as such: if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are equal to two sides and the included angle of the other triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. I'll I'll show you what this means by the help of two figures. Say, let's consider two triangles. Now it says, if two sides in the included angle of one triangle, let's consider this side, this side, and the included angle, therefore, is this. And the included angle of the other are equal to the two sides in the included angle of the other triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So let's consider these two sides in this angle. So if this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side and the included angles respectively are also equal, then these two triangles are congruent. I repeat, if this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side and the corresponding contained angle or the included angle are also equal then these two triangles are congruent. Uh, there is a notation which is attached to congruency which uh, I should have mentioned while discussing congruent triangles itself but uh, I'll, I'll do that discussion here. So if uh, this were A, B, C and this were P, Q, R. The notation for writing Triangle ABC and PQR are congruent would be to write triangle A B C is congruent to triangle P Q R. Now uh, so triangle P Q R is the same thing as triangle R P. But we cannot write triangle ABC is congruent to triangle RQP. This is simply wrong. Why is that wrong? Because when writing congruency, the order of the vertices is important. That is how you get to know the corresponding sides. So because the corresponding side to AB in the second triangle is PQ, AB and PQ pretty much occur at the same order. So that is A first and B second. And because the equal angles are B and angle Q, B occurs in the middle and so therefore Q has to necessarily occur in the middle. So therefore there is a certain order which needs to be followed uh, with regard to congruency, when congruency is being written. And so therefore if uh, angle B is equal to angle Q, then angle B, uh, sorry, B and Q in the corresponding notations will occur at the same place. Uh, 
we could write this as triangle c b a is equal to triangle let's see what it, what it will be now because b is angle b is equal to angle q we will write q in the middle now because a b is a b and p q are the corresponding sides so then after b comes a and after q comes p so therefore this will be p and the remaining vertex is r so we can write triangle cba is congruent to triangle rqp but not triangle abc congruent to triangle rqp this this is something very important because in when writing uh, congruency the notation is important so that you can judge which two sides are actually corresponding sides and which two are not and the same thing for vertices we look at what is called the angle side angle property uh, congruence rule it states if two angles and the included side of one triangle are equal to two angles and the included side of the other triangle then the two triangles are congruent let's see what this means consider two triangles they don't really look congruent but uh, they are very near it says let's call this a b c this is p q r so if this side sorry this angle is equal to this angle and say this angle is equal to this angle that is two angles are equal and the included side included side is very important uh, if these two sides are equal then the congruency may or may not hold but if these two sides are equal then the congruency holds by asa congruence rule therefore triangle a b c is congruent to triangle p q r where obviously AC and PR are corresponding sides and they are both AC and PR. Let, let, let's look at uh, the proof for this uh, condition that is ASA congruence. So remember that SAS was more axiomatic than, that, uh, was an axiomatic rule. So therefore cannot be proved with, the, uh, with our past results. Let, let's look at the proof for uh, angle side angle congruence rule so basically we have to prove that triangle a b c is congruent to triangle p q r we have to prove this what we know or are given is that a c is equal to PR and angle BAC is equal to angle QPR. Also, we know that angle BCA is equal to angle QRP. Now the proof for this proceeds in this way. If we have, I mean, uh, regarding A, B, and P, Q, if P, Q is equal to A, B, that is, P, Q is equal to A, B, then by SAS, these two triangles will obviously be congruent. Right? By this side, this side, and the included angle, these two will be congruent. So we have to look at the cases where AB is not equal to PQ because AB is equal to PQ is a trivial case. So considering AB is greater than 
PQ. Draw a point on AB called say D such that AD is equal to PQ. AD is equal to PQ. Let's just write it down. A D is equal to P Q by construction. Let's join D C. So therefore A D is equal to P Q, that's one side. The other side A C is equal to P R and the angle D A C is equal to angle Q P R. That is this is there and then you have a C is equal to P R that is A C is equal to P R which is given and you have angle D A C is equal to angle Q P R which is also given because angle B A C is equal to angle D A C and so therefore these two sides are equal and the included angle is also equal so by S A S congruence rule we have triangle D A C is congruent to triangle Q P R right then by corresponding parts of congruent triangles angle D C A is equal to angle Q R P that is D C A D C A is equal to Q R P P right but angle Q R P is equal to angle B A C which is given here Q R P is equal to angle A B C or B C A so angle Q R P is equal to angle B C A this implies angle B C A is equal to angle B C A that is angle B C A is equal to angle B C A which is only possible when D coincides with B. You see how that is? Because for this angle to be is, is equal to this angle, this will have to coincide with this. So therefore, D coincides with B. This implies A D is equal to A B and by construction A D is equal to P Q with then A B is equal to P Q. Now because AB is equal to PQ and angle A is equal to angle P and AC is equal to PR by SAS congruence rule you have these two uh, triangle to be con triangles to be congruent. The same uh, thing can be proved for AB less than PQ by taking uh, another point on the extended line AB. Uh, we will continue with other congruence rules and their discussion in some other properties of triangles in another lecture. For now, this is all. Thank you.